Hi, and welcome to 5.4 Kinetic Friction and Decelerating. In this lesson, students will be able to calculate the acceleration of a block as it is slowed to a stop by friction. So here we go again, kinetic friction unbalanced continued. If the applied force is less than the frictional force, the object will accelerate in the direction of the frictional force and slow down. So here we go, applied force is gonna be less than the frictional force this time. So what's gonna happen here? The forces are unbalanced, there is a net force, and it's gonna accelerate in the direction of the frictional force. Now this is, of course, assuming that you're already moving uh, to the right because the frictional force opposes that motion, right? but then you slow down. Kind of something like that, okay? So you could still be having an applied force here and slow down uh, and the frictional force is greater, but most of the time there won't be an applied force. So if there is no applied force, the net force is equal to the frictional force. So the, the thing is just sliding to a stop and you're not you're not pushing on it anymore. It's just already in motion and then it slides to a stop. Kind of like this, okay? So this is the only force in that X direction and the weight and the normal force are balancing each other out. So the net force is equal to the frictional force. And that's really good information to know because you know it's accelerating. MA is equal to the frictional force, mu, Fn, the normal force, okay? So that's pretty cool. And then I wonder what else can you substitute for Fn? And can you rearrange this equation somehow and get a fancy new equation, maybe for a lab in the future? All right, but let's start with a nice problem from Madison Square Garden, home of the New York Rangers. And it used to be home to Matt Zuccarello, but now he's playing for the Minnesota Wild, but he was still great. Thank you, Matt, for your service to the New York Rangers. It says a 0.17 kilogram rubber hockey puck is hit by Matt Zuccarello. The puck slides across the ice with an initial velocity of 15 meters per second. Now it's just a slap shot. He doesn't continue pushing on the puck with his hockey stick. He shoots it across the ice. So after he hits it, it's only the frictional force between the ice and the hockey puck um, that slows it down. So it says, what is the frictional force acting on the puck? What is the acceleration of the puck? How much time does it take the puck to stop? And how far does it travel, you know, before it stops? Uh, if you want, you could pause the video and try this out on your own. You have enough tools in your toolbox to figure it out. Uh, so you could pause the video and I'll show you how to do it right now. So the first step is gonna to be to draw a free body diagram. What else is new? We have the weight of the puck and we have the normal force between the puck and the ice. Now let's assume that the velocity is to the right and what direction would you make the frictional force in that case? Well, the frictional force opposes the motion. So it's going to the left and the frictional force, is that static or kinetic? Well, you're moving, you're sliding, so it's gonna be kinetic. All right, and it says, what is the frictional force acting on the puck? So let's write our given information. Remember the mass is 0 0.17 kilograms. The gravitational field strength or the acceleration due to gravity is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And we actually can figure out what the coefficient of friction is by looking at our reference table. Right over here, let's see, it's a rubber hockey puck on ice. So that's gonna be 0 0.15, 0 0.15. Okay, so um, first, they're at, and they're asking for the frictional force. So we wanna use the friction equation, uh, but we have to find the weight first. So Fg is equal to Mg, Fg is equal to 0 0.17 times negative 9.8. So the weight of the puck is negative 1.666. Uh-oh, that's not a good number. What the heck? And that's actually like the standard mass of a puck. 
that's kind of creepy. Oh, man. I forgot about that. Uh, so then that's also equal to the norm. So now we know the normal force, 1.666. Oh, my gosh. And I'll even write the net force equation for you. And now we're ready to calculate the frictional force because we know the normal force. All of that was just to find Fn, the normal force. So the frictional force is equal to the coefficient of friction, 0 0.15, times your normal force. Okay, the frictional force is equal to, it's only 0 0.15. 2499. Let's make that uh, 0 0.25 newtons. Okay, so that's that's causing you to slow down. That's not a whole lot of uh, force. So I'm assuming that we're going to uh, be traveling pretty far because we have a pretty high initial velocity. Um, all right, so I'm going to put that over here and then erase all this other stuff so we could do the rest of this. Now, to find part B, the acceleration of the puck, we want to be able to do Newton's second law. So that says that A is equal to the net force divided by the mass. In the y direction, these two forces cancel each other out. And in the x direction, you only have this frictional force of 0 0.25 Newtons. So that's what goes in the net force because, again, these cancel each other out and you're, the net force is equal to the frictional force because that's the only other force that's there. So that's equal to 0 0.25 divided by the mass, and you get an acceleration of 1.47 meters per second squared. Now, what direction are you accelerating based on our free body diagram here? What do you think? Pause the video. Think about it. You're actually moving to the right, but you're slowing down. So that means your acceleration must be pointing in the opposite direction. And actually, your acceleration uh, points in the same direction as your net force, right? So the net force is the frictional force, so it's pointing to the left. And if you really wanted to, you could make this negative and make this negative and make this negative based on how we drew our diagram. Uh, it says, how much time does it take the puck to stop? So, yeah, we would make those things negative if we make the initial velocity positive 15 meters per second. Uh, now we know the acceleration is slowing down, so it's negative 1.47 meters per second squared. Um, and it it's it's slowing down. That doesn't This doesn't show that it's slowing down. This shows that it's slowing down, the fact that they're opposite each other, right? You could have a negative acceleration and still be speeding up if this was negative, uh, but we want to slow down. Okay, anyway, that's just a little review. Um, and then you're looking for how much time does it take? What else? What else do we know? Well, it comes to a stop, so VF is equal to zero. Look at all this stuff messed in there. All right, so we have VF, VI, A, and T. Which equation are you going to use? Let's use this equation here. You'll substitute in your numbers, and then you'll solve. And you should always get a positive number for your time. Uh, this becomes negative because we subtracted it to the other side. Negative divided by a negative is a positive 10.2 seconds. Uh, great, so now we have a lot of information. We know VF, VI, A, T, uh, and we could calculate the distance that the puck travels. I think it's going to go pretty far in 10 seconds. Maybe they're not playing on a standard ice hockey rink. Maybe he's on like a, a big lake, a big frozen lake, and he just shoots it really fast, 15 meters per second. Uh, so let's calculate what the displacement's going to be. Uh, you could use a number of different equations because you know four pieces of information. So let's use this one. Substitute in the numbers. And you end up getting a displacement of 76.5 meters. That's pretty far uh, before it comes to a stop. Awesome. Hopefully you tried that on your own and you got those answers. Let's try this one. 
It says a 0.5 kilogram puck sliding to the right on a horizontal shuffleboard court. What the heck is shuffleboard courts made out of? I don't know. What the heck is the puck made out of? Who knows? It's slowed to a rest by a frictional force with a magnitude of 1.2 newtons. What is the coefficient of friction between the puck and the surface of the shuffleboard court? Good question. Part B, what is the net force acting on the puck, then the acceleration, and then if the puck's initial velocity is 5 meters per second, how much time does it take for the puck to come to a stop? So these are kind of similar to the last one. Really try this one on your own, okay? Because when I show you the answer, it's going to be like, oh, yeah, duh. But it's a good question. Try, try to struggle with it first. Hopefully it's not that much of a struggle. But if it is, that's good because you're about to learn. All right, so let's draw our free body diagram. Should I use black or white? Let's be, let's be crazy and let's use purple. Oh my gosh. All right, so we have our free body diagram. We got FG. We got our normal force. And let's assume that we're going to the right again. And that means our frictional force acts opposing our motion. Okay. So what do we know? The frictional force, ooh, that's 1.2 newtons. And they tell us the mass is 0 0.5 kilograms. And we know that shuffleboard courts are mostly on Earth. So we know that. And okay, what's the coefficient of friction? You got to look in your reference table. And in the reference table, it doesn't say shuffleboard court. So, yeah, you can't look in your reference table. You got to do some physics. The strategy, ready for this? Let's find the weight, which will tell us what the normal force is, and then we'll actually know the frictional force and the normal force, and we can solve for the coefficient in our equation. So the weight looks like this. The normal force looks like this. The friction formula looks like this. You substitute in what you know. Now, remember, they tell us this is 1.2 newtons right in the problem. So that's pretty cool. We don't know what the coefficient is because it doesn't tell us on the reference table. But that's okay because we know the normal force now. And all you have to do is divide, right? 1.2 divided by 4.9. And the coefficient of friction between the shuffleboard court and the puck is 0 0.24. What are the units for the coefficient of friction? A newton per newton, which is, they cancel out, right? A newton divided by a newton. There is no units. Okay, then it says, what is the net force acting on the puck? Remember, in the x direction, the net force is equal to the frictional force because there's no other force acting there, and these two forces are balancing each other out. So that's an easy one. The net force, no calculation required. They actually tell you in the problem it's 1.2 newtons. That's kind of just leading into uh, letter C, which says what is the acceleration of the puck? So the acceleration is equal to the net force divided by the mass, uh, we know that's 1.2 newtons divided by the 0 0.5 kilograms, and you get 2.4 meters per second squared. Great. All right, this is getting a little sloppy. Let me box it out a little. Is that better or worse? I don't know. Okay, and then hopefully your eyes aren't hurting from looking at this purple pen against the green background. Uh, but... All right, and then we have to think, okay, so let's let's do the kinematic stuff now. It says if the puck's initial velocity is 5 meters per second. So that's, we said, is going to the right. All right, so 5 meters per second, VI equals positive 5 meters per second. Uh, how much time does it take to come to a stop? VF is equal to 0 meters per second. Uh, we just calculated the acceleration, and if I just plugged it in like this, that means we would be speeding up because the velocity is going in the same direction as your acceleration. And then we wouldn't, how would you come to zero? It doesn't make any sense. Uh, so we want to make sure we make the acceleration negative because same as last time, 
the way we drew this, it's pointing to the left. Uh, so we would make this actually negative as well, and this is negative two. 0.4. So then it says, what is the time? So you could use VF equals VI plus AT. You substitute in. And that shuffleboard puck comes to a stop in less than half a second, 0 0.48 seconds. If you've never played shuffle before, shuffleboard before, I highly recommend it. It is a lot of fun. So if you're near some place that has a shuffleboard court, it's not just for old people. Check it out. It's a lot of fun. And then you don't have to stare at a screen all day. You could be outside pushing pucks around like a pro. All right. That's about it. Thanks for watching and have a great day.